So you're saying first quarter, by the end of the quarter of 2022 is when this bubble began. Yeah, I think it begins in the next three months and, and you see that first crash by history within three months of that. So in the first half of the year, yes, I think the five to the five percent crash and it will come very fast. When when the stocks markets go up for about a decade, they use a trick when interest rates, inflation starts to rise late in the, in the bond rate, the bond rates go up. Now, the big thing right now, which is meanly unusual. Do you think that 22 is going to be a terrible year for the markets and the economy? Now, the Fed minutes spooking the markets today, indicating a more aggressive Fed and a tapering schedule that will be moved up, raising rates possibly as March. But just how dire is your fall cost for 2020? Well, okay, first of got to remember, I was the most bullish guy in the whole country in the 1980s when this boom was just getting going and people thought, oh, this is a short-term thing. People thought Japan and Asia was going to take over the world and the U.S. was dead. So I've been predicting the greatest boom in history. You can't have the greatest boom in history without it coming down hard and having a big crash. Your market's on its way. You know, we've been growing at 1.65% since the 2009 bottom with massive stimulus, with almost with very low inflation. We should have high inflation and high growth with this much stimulus. And it's because they're fighting a declining tide. And, and the cost of not allowing a recession, not allowing the bubble and the debt to shake down, we do. Uh, we've got the, a monster financial asset. In financial assets, stocks, real estate, bonds, that sort of stuff. That it, normally that would be two times GDP, maybe two and a half, and a normal, yeah. uh, debts at 253 trillion. That's off the charts, over three times global GDP. And but normally that'd be one and a half. You know? So we, but they they use this financial asset bubble to offset the debt deleveraging and the debt bubble bursting. And now we have a bigger monster. And I am predicting, or the millennials will never be able to invest at reasonable rates, and the economy can't rebalance. And, and, and prepare for the next boom. And again, I've been thinking the next boom forever would be the millennials from 2024 into 2037. Not as long as the baby boom boom and not as steep, but we will see another boom to follow the U.S. and more so in Asia, especially India this time, uh, in China and South Asia. So, so there's more boom to come, but but a major, this is going to be the biggest crash, Correct. the biggest downturn of your lifetime is what I mean. Most of it's going to happen probably in 2000. When the stocks markets go up for about a decade, prick, interest rates, inflation starts to rise late in the, in the bond rate, the bond rates go up. Now, the big thing right now, which meanly, we have 6.8% inflation and rising and the 10 years we bond is doing 1.4%. You know, that's like a negative 7%. So, that I think the Treasury bond may what may be it keeps edging up that that to the trigger, but but we're way beyond. So first of all, I I've studied every major bubble in, and the first crash. Now I'm just saying the first crash when the bubble finally gives, okay, like in 20, 1929 or in 2000 in May of 2000 when it first crashed. The first crash averaged 46 percent just 2.6 months. Now, when a major bubble of this magnitude, like 1929 or 2000 or now 2021 crashes, the whole crash tends to be about 80 to 90. I'm saying stocks in general in this crash will be closer to the 29 to 32 crash. I'm estimating 87% for the S&P 500 and be slightly higher for the NASDAQ. So this is not something to sit through and just rebalance as financial advisors say. Yeah. You have to get out of the way of this and then we will have the buy opportunity investments of a lifetime in around late 2020s. In a stock crash like this, after a major bubble, everything will go down, including utility. It's just those sectors will go down 40 percent, and then the leading sector will go down 70, 90. So, so that's the difference. There is no safe place to hide. The only place to hide, which was proven in 2008, and it wasn't gold. Gold went down 40, 50 percent in the course of that crash. It was the U.S. 10 and 30 year treasury bond and the U.S. dollar that bounced in that crash in late 2008 when it was that, that was the safe haven. That's what I'm telling people. Getting treasury bonds. I'd even wait here to let it go higher. Maybe wait until early January, then get in these treasury, sit there, and whether the crash happens now or a couple months from now, when it does, it's going to come like a friend. That's what. Smart money will start shorting stocks and cryptos, and then all these people that piled in, it's the dumb money, I hate to say it, the everyday person that piles in in the last six to 12 months, just like in 90, and when the smart money starts selling, it doesn't for them because all these people are overcommitted and then they get scared because they're not so. So all it takes is to get 
the markets to go down, I think a little over 20% and people will start paying. But, but take smart money to trigger that. The dumb money is not going to trigger this. The smart money to say enough is that, that you just have to look for in this market. You're recommending that people pull their money out of markets, out of the housing market as well, out of Christmas. As much as you can. Markets. I mean, people and, not going to sell a cash. home that could be the rest of their life. But do you have a vacation sure. home that you use? For a few weeks a year? Yeah, I would advise selling it. Vacation home bubble more and go down more. So yes, yeah, sell the risk assets you don't want to hold, which is everything. And the more you sell, the better. That's all I'm saying. It's your choice when you sell or do. Stock market correction to a 90 cent correction. This out. We get out. I thought that very 2000 pair. I say thousand out of to buy my and something better. Four to seven, a couple of years. That's what. So you're saying first quarter, by the end of the first quarter of 22 is when this bubble. Yeah, I think it begins in the next three months and, and you see that first crash by history within three months of that. So in the first half of there, yes, I think the five to the five percent crash and it will come very fast. When, and how much more can the market go up when it's already gone up this against all the trends? Monetary policy is about eight to now it starts, but it lags about 18 months in real effect. And so they've been forced to start to taper off. And what I keep telling people, you got to understand that this, you got to understand bubbles. They're both the same thing. Something blows up, it takes three more in a bubble or an addiction going, and all it takes is pulling back. You don't have to stop, it's less. And then no state is all it takes at some point. Government's fighting this crash, and so it is impossible to predict exactly what's happened. I am telling you, and I will stand by this, we are going to see, and I think it's going to happen in 2022. What we've seen is we've seen one index from, from the corporate bonds to then the uh, the small caps and Bitcoin, and then the, uh, the, the NASDAQ, peaked in November 22nd, and, and it looks to me like the essence basically yesterday. So to see the succession of peaks down into narrow, narrow, more large cap, that's a classic long-term top. That's why I'm saying it's likely now, but there is no way to tell this until it happens. But I am warning with unbelievable analysis in history of every bubble, major bubble the last hundred years, that first crash will be 40 to 55% so fast you will not see it. So if you wait to see if I'm right and take that risk, you are going to be hit very hard and very bad. No exception. Before we continue, help us clicking that YouTube like button and subscribe now to our channel. This shows the algorithm that you valued this information. And it helps us spread that message. Sharing is caring. And now, let's continue. Do you want to know one thing about crypto? I made over 3000% in profit in a few weeks. Fact is, the traditional financial system, the traditional money system makes you poor, not rich. If you want to earn $500,000, million, you have to wait until you're 50, 60, 70 in the traditional financial system and you probably will still be broke and you will be old. This is not a sexy combination as you can imagine. But the question is, how can you start in crypto and make these profits? Where to invest? Where to start? My name is Gunnar and I'm from Germany as you can hear and things are a little bit different in Germany. More about that later on. The fact is, there are lots of different cryptocurrencies. It's a gigantic universe where beginners and professionals get easily lost. But there is light at the end of the tunnel. There are seven key steps you need to follow to become successful in this market. You have to know them and if you fail one of them, it's literally impossible to succeed in this market. Just an example, one of the key points is your exchange and one of the biggest are for example Binance and Coinbase. These are trusted and well established exchanges but, and this is a big but, you won't find the super profitable coins on those exchanges. The unknown super profitable coins that get gigantic profits are not traded on those kind of exchanges. They are traded on much smaller insider platforms that are barely known. And I can tell you what those super secret exchanges are and why they are so profitable. And another super important thing are the right information sources. The point is, the internet is gigantic. There are hundreds and hundreds of YouTube channels, blogs, pages and much, much more. And there are also market makers and influencers. For example, Elon Musk, he is not a crypto guy. But the moment he recommended Dogecoin, it went through the roof, to the moon so to say. But why did he recommend it? Where did he hear it from? He didn't hear it from newspapers. And believe me, he is listening to someone. But you have to know who and you have to react before he is reacting. This is really, really important. 
And these are only two of the seven steps you have to follow in order to be successful in crypto. And if you want to know all of these steps in much more detail, and if you want to have a comprehensive checklist, here's what you should do. There is a link below this video. Click on this link and you will get the opportunity to subscribe to my channel. Click on the link and you will see a video where I explain the next steps. So see you soon. Click on the link now. I'll see you there.